In this video, we're going to set up hosting with DreamHost. I'll show you how to properly set up and configure WordPress so that your site will be off to the best start possible. It's really important to have WordPress configured properly, so you're not going to want to miss that section. To make sure we're on the same page, use the sponsored link below this video to sign up for DreamHost, and you'll get $25 off your hosting. Using the sponsored link actually saves you money, and DreamHost will provide me with compensation that helps me to keep these tutorials free for you. So let's take the first step in building our website by signing up for hosting and configuring WordPress. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our WordPress website set up with DreamHost. So to do that, we're going to go over here to Web Hosting, and then we're going to click on Hosting Overview. And now this gives us access to all of the main hosting services that DreamHost provides. Now the two I recommend are the Shared Hosting and the Managed WordPress Hosting. The Managed WordPress Hosting is sort of a more robust hosting service designed specifically for WordPress and then the shared hosting is sort of their more economical version and you can always move up from the shared hosting to the managed WordPress hosting as your website grows. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start off with the shared hosting and then we can go ahead and we can look at this page to learn more about it. But if you already know you want to use DreamHost then just click on the build your dreams today button and then just go ahead and create a username and password and then click continue. So if you want to register a new domain, you can do that here. If you already own a domain, you can click this button and use that. Or you also have the option of starting with a free subdomain. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can also um, set this up later. If you do need to get a domain name, I think that getting your domain name through DreamHost is an absolutely great option. Actually, I recommend DreamHost as just a domain name registrar only, even if you don't need hosting. And the reason why, I think the top reason for registering your domain with DreamHost is the fact that they include domain privacy for free. And what that means is that all the information that you give them, your address and your phone number, they keep that hidden from people who might want to market to you. So you don't wind up getting a bunch of junk mail and phone calls right after you first register your website. Another great option is if you don't know what you want your uh, domain to be yet, and I'm going to be making a video about how to choose a domain name, you can just go ahead and start with you know your best guess, and it's going to be your best guess.dreamhosters.com. And that's a really nice feature to just be able to get started right away. And that's what I'm going to choose um, since this is just an example to show you guys how to sign up for DreamHost. And we're going to click continue at the bottom. And then we've got a choice of shared hosting plan. So obviously, the longer you sign up for, the more you can save. I'm just going to go with monthly since this is just an example to show you guys how this works. And at this point, you probably don't need a MySQL VPS. This is just something that you can use to make your website run faster. I would actually recommend that instead of choosing this service, you just go to the DreamPress WordPress managed hosting that they offer. So let's go ahead and let's have them install WordPress since that's what we want to do anyways, and then click Continue. Then you need to fill out uh, this information about yourself. And then after you fill out all of this information, just scroll down to the bottom here, just make sure that everything um, is correct, and then click Place Order Now. So there we go, and now we just need to click on this Continue to Your Web Panel to get started. Okay, so this here is the DreamHost dashboard. This is where you can control all of your settings for your hosting. And one of the main settings that we're going to be looking at is the domains here. And so you can manage domains, you can register a new domain. Right now I just have a subdomain with DreamHosters. But if you had purchased a domain, you would see it here. And even if you're using subdomain, you can use that to get started building your website and then later on move your site or actually just point your site to your final domain name. So don't worry about starting with a subdomain. You still have time to decide what your domain name is going to be and you can think about it for a little bit while you're actually building your site. And you can also, if you wanted to create another subdomain, say you wanted to just do another test site or something like that, you can do this by adding domains and subdomains here. And then when it says domain to host, you just choose the name that you want and then do .dreamhosters.com and you can add your own subdomain that way. And then if we click over here on registrations, this is where you'd see the domain names that you have registered. I don't own any, any domains on this account, so there's nothing here under registrations. And then if you wanted to set up email for your domain, DreamHost does include a very basic email service uh, that you can use. And it's a great way to get started without using any additional money. I do recommend, though, using something like um, Google for Business, though, just because 
it's just a much more robust email system. It makes a lot more sense. It's a lot easier to use. Most people are already familiar with it. But to just get started with a professional email address with your domain name, setting it up with DreamHost and using this managed mail setting is definitely a good option. So let's go ahead and um, do what we're here to do, and that is configure our website. So to do that, we go over to our managed domains. We can see that our website is fully hosted after we bought hosting. Because if you're using this to just register domain names, it won't say fully hosted. It will just say, I think it says registered here. But since this domain is fully hosted, it's ready to be used. And so to do that, we're just going to click on visit right here. And during the installation process, I had uh, DreamHost install WordPress for me. Now, something to keep in mind, or uh, one of the issues that I ran into, is for some reason with Safari, the uh, internet browser for Mac, um, it wouldn't load this page. I don't really know why. I contacted support. They didn't really know why, so I'm using Chrome. And that's just one thing to keep in mind. It, it should be fine when the site is actually live and ready to go. Sometimes... When you're building websites, unfortunately, things like this happen. So I had to switch from Safari to Chrome to continue this demo. So go ahead and select your language. My language is English. We'll just do continue. And then we need to give it a site title. And then we need to create a username. And here it's really important that you don't want to use admin as your username. You want to use a sophisticated username, something that's not the title of your website, uh, something that's not going to be easy to for someone to guess that's really important just for the security of your website and to make sure uh, that hackers don't break into your site. So I'm going to use real website hints because it has nothing to do with uh, this website so that should be that should be a good secure username to use. And then DreamHost here has actually auto-filled this with a strong password and you always want to use a strong password it's really important especially on websites because unfortunately hackers do try to break in to wordpress websites all the time and it's not really that they're interested in what's on your website what they're interested in is getting control over the server that your website's running so they can have the server do all sorts of bad and horrible things out there in the world so you want to make sure you use strong passwords and i definitely recommend to remember all of these crazy passwords that you need to remember to use a password management system. I personally use LastPass, other services like 1Password that are also great. I use LastPass. I've been using it for years. I found it to be you know, a really good service. But whatever you do, uh, you definitely want to keep unique, at least unique passwords, if not unique usernames and passwords for all of the different services that you're going to be signing up for as you create your website. And then go ahead and add your email address in here. And this email address is what's going to be used by your website to communicate with you. So if there's something wrong with your website or if you get a new notification, like somebody comments on your website, this is the email address that your website's going to be using to contact you. And then we want to leave this unchecked because we want search engines to be able to index our site. It's not really going to necessarily stop search engines from indexing our site. It's just going to put a flag there saying, hey, we'd rather you not index our site. And then just go ahead and click Install WordPress. And then we need to log in for the first time, so click Log In. Okay, and here we are on the dashboard of our website. So this is everything that has to do with our website. It's here, this is the WordPress dashboard, so it's the same pretty much across all WordPress websites. And this is where we're going to control everything that has to do with our website. So uh, there's a few settings that are really important to change and make sure you have configured properly. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that. In the next video, we're going to actually start building our site, and we're going to do that by installing a theme. And I'm going to show you guys how to install a theme, and I'm also going to recommend um, a really great WordPress theme that I like. So let's go ahead by adjusting the settings. Uh, the first setting that I like to do is just go down here to Settings. You can either click on Settings right here, or you can click on General. And so we've got the title of our website right here. And I also like to put in a tagline. This is not something that necessarily is very prominent on your site, but it's a good idea just for search engine optimization to put maybe something like the main purpose of your business or your website. And then here we've got the address of our website. It's really important you do not want to change this um, unless you actually have changed your URL first on your website because if you change this you won't be able to access your site you'll have to 
log in, you'll have to FTP into your website and uh, change the code in your site to be able to access your website again. So it's really important that you do not adjust this unless you're changing your the URL of your website on your at your domain registrar or on your hosting company. Really important. And here's the email address that we entered in. And then another thing that's really important with WordPress is after you've changed the settings, always scroll down to the bottom and click this Save Changes button. Because if you don't do that, then the changes that you make won't be saved. So the next thing we want to change here is permalinks. This is also a really important setting to change. And the standard default setting is either plain or day and name. But what we want to use is we want to use post name. And the reason why you want to do that is you can see right here where it says sample dash post. So that would be the name of the post or page that you created. And if we want our site to be easily understood by search engines and easily understood by our viewers, we want to make sure that the URLs for all of our pages and posts are easy to understand. So here's an example of how this would work. Say that we created a page or a post called Surfboards in Surf Town, and we wanted to rank for that specific term on Google or the other search engines. When we set it to post name like this, it'll make the URL also help us with our search engine optimization. So the post would be called surfboards dash four dash surf town here, or whatever the name of our post would be. And that's going to help not only be easy for our viewers to understand if we're trying to share this URL on social media, on another place on our website, or just telling somebody what the URL is, but it's also going to make it easy for search engines to be able to read and be able to help people who are searching for that topic on the internet find it more easily. It's really a very important setting to set. And as usual with WordPress, make sure you scroll down to the bottom and you click Save Changes. Now the next thing we want to do is just look at what plugins are installed. Some hosting companies install extra plugins and we want to remove anything extra. The best way to reduce frustration when building websites is to not have anything that you don't need running on your website because anything extra is something that can potentially cause problems and so we just want to remove anything that can potentially cause problems. So it looks like DreamHost with their WordPress installation, every hosting company does it a little bit differently, but DreamHost with their WordPress installation has included all of these plugins, but you can see there's it says activate and delete here. And that means that none of these plugins are actually active, so they're not running on their website, they're just installed. Normally what you would have to do if a plugin was active is you there'd be a instead of saying activate here, it would say deactivate, and you'd have to click deactivate first, refresh the page, um, and then delete it. But in this case we can just go ahead and delete things right away. So the first thing we're going to delete is Hello Dolly because it doesn't really serve any purpose and we don't need it on our website. I would recommend leaving WP Super Cache for now. It's a plugin that DreamHost has added to help your site load faster. And it's made by Automatic, so those are the creators of WordPress. And WP Forms Lite, I'm actually not familiar with, um, so I'm going to delete it on my site. It's something that you might want to look into for yourself. And then these two Akismet and Jetpack. I use Akismet. It's a great way of protecting your blog uh, from spam comments. It's not something that I think you need to have right when you first launch your site. It takes a while for your site to show up in search engine results and for spammers to find your website. And it does require an additional payment in order to be able to use it to its full potential. So I would say look into it first. Um, you might not want to install it right away, but that's up to you. Uh, Jetpack, uh, the same thing. It does offer a lot of really great features. It's not something that I personally use on my website, but there definitely is a lot of value to it. So it's something you might want to look into and decide whether or not you want it on your website. I would definitely think though that if you're going to use Jetpack, that you look at the features that it has and make sure that you're not doubling up with another plugin that offers the same features. But both of these, um, all three of these actually are Great plugins, it's just a matter of whether you need them on your site. If you don't need them, definitely get rid of them. And then the final thing we need to do is just go to our pages here. And usually by default, there's a sample page that's been loaded by um, WordPress as part of the installation. So we can just trash that because we're going to be building our own pages and we're going to be doing that um, in the next couple of videos coming up. And then under posts, 
We also want to remove the default post, the hello world post that is um, added during the installation and trash that. Okay, so there we go. Um, pretty simple. We've now got WordPress set up and configured. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to install a theme for WordPress. And we're going to get started configuring and using that theme. So go ahead and click on the next video to get started.